30 chairmen who have not brought their votes forward yet. We need the observers for the two candidates to come forward. One for Ron Lee and one for Cindy. Please come forward to the stage on the left, my left side. Observers for Ron Lee and Cindy. Say aye. aye. All those opposed? 
Congratulations. So we're still counting one of these. The good news is, unless it's a tie, which has happened in national elections um, that I was recently involved with. But in any event, uh, when that is done, we'll have our last officer uh, announcement. In the meantime, pursuant to the convention rules, we'll proceed to the final order of business, which is second to last order of business before adjournment. Miscellaneous business. Is there any miscellaneous business to come to the body? Mr. Chairman, for motion. Motion's in order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Whereas Idaho currently has 4,522,779 acres in 12 federally designated wildernesses, whereas Idaho has enough wilderness to meet the needs for this severely restricted land designation, whereas according to the Utah State University study entitled The Economic Costs of Wilderness by Steve Young and Simmons, of the John N. Huntsman School of Business and States. We find that when controlling for other types of federally held land and additional factors impacting economic conditions, federally designated wilderness negatively impacts local economic conditions. Specifically, we find a significant negative relationship between the presence of wilderness and county total payroll, county tax receipts, and county average household income. Whereas rural Idaho cannot withstand needless additional negative impacts on their economy, whereas many laws already provide adequate protection of Idaho's remaining federal wildlands and other less restrictive alternatives are available to protect the land and its resources. The, United, the USDA Forest Service has created a de facto system of new wildernesses with its policies for managing recommended wilderness areas in essentially the same manner as designated wildernesses. Therefore, I move that the Idaho Republican Party oppose the designation of additional wilderness in Idaho and supports the establishment of a sunset law on recommended wilderness areas and that the Republican Party will send a letter to the Idaho delegation stating this position. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman. Yes. I live in Custer County and I second this motion. Okay, we will allow five minutes of discussion on each side. We've heard the opening discussion, so is there any uh, opposition debate? Is there opposition debate? Let's, uh, let's go ahead and let that get circulated for a minute or so, to be fair to everybody. Is this what's being distributed, what you read? Yes, verbatim. Okay. I heard a call for the question. Was there a second? There's a second. Call for the question is not debatable. It requires two-thirds vote to end debate, and then we would proceed to vote on the issue at hand. So to end debate, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. To the underlying question, you heard the motion. Does anyone need it repeated? You have it in front of you. Get a piece of paper. All those in favor of the motion as stated say aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay, thank you. All right, so while we're waiting for the uh, results for the National Committee Woman Race, uh, let me tell you a couple of things. If, if there's any other miscellaneous business to come before the body, a few announcements. Uh, number one, the 415 meeting, I can even use the restroom before then, but the 415 meeting will be right out and to the left in 119, meeting with Shirley Taylor. Delegates and alternates and wannabe guests to the National Convention to collect your contact information and then the actual business that needs to be conducted uh, will be assembled in the next week or so, picking committee members amongst the delegates, that kind of thing. But anybody that wants to go to Tampa uh, as a guest or that was selected today as a delegate or an alternate, you need to be in that meeting in room 119 so that Shirley Taylor knows how to get a hold of you and can get you signed up in the right spot. So, room 119. She also has some wonderful information about St. Pete and Tampa and a bunch of handouts that are really neat uh, that you'll want to have. If you don't know for sure if you can go and you're interested, you know, please go ahead and show up. In addition, 
The State Central Committee by rule will meet immediately upon adjournment of the convention. We'll meet right here. All State Central Committee members, you know who you are. Please reconvene here. Those of you that are not in the State Central Committee, if you could vacate the room or at least go up here to the second level uh, with your conversations so that they can conduct their business uh, with the new chairman, we'd appreciate that. Please, 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 on your way out, clean up the area around you. CSI and the Twin Falls County Central Committee and their committee and volunteers have been very good about getting this wonderful location for us and we'd like to keep it in as good a shape when we leave as we can. So if you could clean up the area around you. All right, you can do that on your way out too. I appreciate that. We want to take this opportunity to thank all of the convention planning committee from Twin Falls County. Please, please stand so we can recognize and thank all of you that played a role in putting on this wonderful convention. too can host a state convention. I heard people talking about it already last night. So that'll be a chore for the Central Committee to tackle on a schedule to be set by the Chairman and the Executive Committee. We'll look forward to seeing who steps forward in 2014. I also want to thank all of the folks that staffed us the last couple of days, our parliamentarians, our sergeants at arms, our staff, Deidre, Trevor, Jonathan, Marla is our convention secretary, uh, and of course Jason Rich, our uh, general counsel, who have helped the parliamentarians, and our intern as well. Thank you. You guys did an awesome job. Please recognize them as well. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my name is Jason Robinson, delegate from Ada County. I would like to remind everybody that the uh, fantastic attention that Idaho got from all of the national candidates for the office of president was made possible by our caucus and, if I may be so bold, by the really large caucus that Ada County held. And we are selling coins to help uh, pay off some of that cost of that caucus out in the lobby. Thank you. Twenty dollars. Ten dollars. Twenty dollars? I paid ten. ten. It was ten yesterday. Did they go up? All right, ten. Ten dollars. Okay. We'll take five. We'll take one. Pretty soon they'll be going for one. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, the way this is going to work is we're going to recess to wait to hear the results. We'll just take a few minutes um, and we'll announce who the winner is and then we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So before we do that, um, I just want to say as the outgoing party chairman how much I've appreciated the opportunity to serve over the last four years. And uh, I, I want to say this, um, a lot of people think that there's acrimony and division amongst the Republican Party, at least people that write newspaper editorials. I don't see that. I don't see acrimony. I see unity coming out of this convention. I see us working hard to elect our sheriffs, our prosecutors, our county commissioners, our legislators, our senators, and our next president of the United States, Mitt Romney. That's what I see. But I, the corollary to no acrimony doesn't mean no energy. There's energy and excitement. There's no apathy in the Idaho Republican Party. There's jealousy on the other side of the aisle from the other parties. Because we are the party of energy, we're the party of ideas, and we're the party that works together. So fight hard for your ideas, stand tall for your candidates, and then we all come together and we march toward November in a great election victory. And that's, I hope, the lasting legacy that carries forward, is that whether you're, I was the guy in 1988 that supported Jack Kemp. We had 7%. I went to the Republican National Committee and asked if I could have a job making phone calls for George Bush to raise money. I can't imagine if I'd have been met at the door by Frank Ferenkopf or one of the other folks at the RNC and said, no, you supported that other guy. Well, yeah I did, that's who I thought was the best. And he didn't win, 
but I'm here for the team now, and I'm going to support George Bush 41. And I say the same thing about all the energy and all the excitement and all the enthusiasm of the Ron Paul people and about the Rick Santorum people and the Mitt Romney people that are new here that weren't here before. We need to harness all of that energy and all that excitement and continue to work together for that common bond, what I mentioned yesterday, that common message that we all have. So if we can continue to do that, and I know it's hard time to time, we will continue to be successful as a party and carry the banner forward as Idaho for this great nation. With that, we're going to go uh, into a recess and subject to the call, the chair will announce the results of the National Committee Women Race. Feel free to get up and mill around, but we'll, we will announce it as soon as we have it. So in case I do 